Billy Boulevard, Cigar Rant number 26, FDA, Stay Out of My Humidor, part two. My first cigar rant was entitled, FDA, Stay Out of My Humidor. The reason why I did my first cigar rant on that was because it was the biggest threat to cigar culture. So now I stand before you today. The FDA has dropped the bomb. The barbarians are no longer at the gate. They have stormed the gate and they are burning down the village. The most important things that are gonna affect us would have to be the time to market for new cigars. The time to market is gonna be at least at a minimum one year, probably at a maximum three, possibly even four years before a new blend can get to the market. The second thing that's gonna impact this is the cost. The cost of the FDA's evaluation and approval process, incredible. Anywhere between $150,000 and $300,000. What does this mean? Well, the boom in cigars has really been fueled by boutique blends. Boutique cigars are cigars that come out in limited batches, very small numbers, which means it goes against the model of the larger cigar companies. A small player is able to step in, find a lovely blend of tobacco, put that blend together, finalize it, get it constructed, get it distributed. Well now, the cost of producing the cigar outweighs the money that's going to be returned from. There's absolutely no way that the boutique cigar business is going to be able to survive with those kinds of returns. So effectively, the FDA has decimated the boutique cigar business. The funny thing about that, the, the funny thing about the whole issue with free samples, if you read the legislation, you should hear how they talk about it. The verbiage that they use is that you can touch, sniff, feel, observe, uh, you know, you can do all these things to a cigar and that is your sampling process. That is such a severe degree of naivety. That is, it's, it's an egregious position to take, to say that by being able to touch, look at, possibly sniff the foot of a cigar that you've sampled it. You have to smoke a cigar to know its quality, to understand the blend, to understand the flavor profile. You can't do any of that until you smoke the cigar. That is just plain old stupid. How did we get here? How did we end up here? In 2009, when they initially came at us with a baseball bat, we were given special considerations. Special considerations were because, namely, teens don't smoke premium handmade cigars. They're financial out of their reach, and they don't appreciate the flavor profile. This is a acquired taste. 15 year olds don't like the taste of a full blown cigar. So we were treated different because we were different. However, they did want to go after e-cigs and vapes. Why? Those aren't necessarily natural products. Now, from what I've gathered, the ingredients are relatively simple, but make no mistake, that is not something that comes naturally out of the earth. There's something in there that needs to be evaluated, that needs to be looked at, that needs to be approved before it gets consumed. However, the vapes, the e-cigs, they all try to claim the same legislation that was put aside for premium handmade cigars. And they actually won. And this sent the message to the FDA. The message was this. If you want to regulate machine-made flavored cigars, if you want to regulate e-cigs, vapes, things of the sort, then you're going to have to go after premium handmade cigars. Because if you don't, you're going to find some way to seek refuge under special considerations given to premium handmade cigars. So that's how we got here. And we know that because that information is embedded in the legislation. It says that the inability to find a way out using the special considerations given to premium handmade cigars are now going to be a mute point because they will all be regulated. They actually use that mute point. It will be impossible for you now to claim special considerations that were given to premium handmade cigars because there will be no special considerations made from premium handmade cigars. But in order to get that done, they had to do a little bit of lying. The line that they did mainly was to claim that now a youth is no longer somebody that is below the age of 18. A youth is now not only a teenager, but also what they call a young adult, somebody from the age of 18 to 29. FDA wants to protect somebody that is damn near 30 years old from smoking a cigar. You know that's bullshit, I know that's bullshit. They simply said that because they know they had to come up with some reason, some justification, aside from stopping other companies from claiming that they should be treated like premium handmade cigars. And the special consideration, the bullshit that they came up with was that they are protecting people who are damn near 30 years old from smoking a cigar. What bugs me is, everybody knows about this legislation. However, we need 100,000 signatures to get the ball back into play. Meaning, to get this back into the halls of Congress for them to reevaluate this. There's only one way to do that, and we need 100,000 signatures. Currently, as I am making this video right now, we have 10,000. A lot of you that are posting pictures of cigars with your gun, pictures of cigars with your knife, pictures of your cigar with bottles of scotch and wine and your Ferragamo shoes and what, stop that, knock it off, take some time out, go to the website that's in this description, simply click a few buttons, confirm your email address, 
and you're accounted for. There's no wiggle room for anything else. I rarely do I ask people to like and share. I'm asking you, share this video with everyone. We have one chance to put the ball back in play. What's basically gonna to have to take place is ironclad legislation and that specifically and explicitly outlines and delineates exactly what a premium cigar is. That way, these other companies that wanna hide under the banner of premium cigars, the e-cigs, the vapes, the flavored shit sticks, they can't hide under the banner of a premium handmade cigar if that legislation is tightened and reworded so that nobody can slither out of the new legislation. That's the last chance we have. And you are the only people that can step up and make something happen.